Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Second Chance. This evening, my guest will be Mr. Paris Friday, who has an awesome story that he wants to help you, encourage you to make yourself and give yourself a second chance at life. How you doing there, Mr. Friday? Pretty good, Mr. Brown. Great, great. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, my name is Paris Friday. I grew up in Charlotte, North Carolina, on the west side in Dalton Village. Um, I went to Olympic High School. And during that time, I lived in Dalton Village. I don't know if you're familiar with the old Dalton Village, but it was a drug-infested area. It was a high crime rate area on West Boulevard. And at that time, um, I got involved in different things. The streets had a negative part, and it pulled me in at a younger age because the influence was so strong at that time. Not saying that my parents weren't there, but the streets were more powerful at that time. Being a child, you notice certain things in your life that's attracted to you. And even though you hear your calling from your mother or your father, sometimes that calling is just not strong enough and you get pulled into the streets. And that's what happened to me at an early age. And during that period, I started doing all types of things from selling drugs, carrying guns, just running with the wrong crowd. Negative influence that controlled my life at the time. And over the course of the years, it led to something much greater in the future which was incarceration. Back in 1993, that's when I went to prison, federal prison, for conspiracy and racketeering. It was hard getting sentenced to 20 years because then I had lost my girlfriend, Angel, who was pregnant with our daughter at the time, Jermaine. And that was the most devastating moment I ever had. When I looked back and saw everything that I wanted at that time, I let slip out my hands do to my behavior, which led me to prison. Throughout the course of prison, I wanted to give up. It was times were hard. I really wanted to give up because I felt I felt myself. I felt the people that was looking for me for guidance, looking to me for support. But I made a commitment to myself while in prison to try to better myself, to reinvent myself. So I started taking all types of courses in class. Uh, Healthcare Material Management from Purdue University. Vance Granville Community College, I took up small engine repair. Computer courses from Vance Granville Community College. It was all different types of college I was taking to try to better myself. I was saying, I failed at my first life, but my second life, if I ever make it out of here, I would make it correct. And just so happened I got blessed this year when I was released to the halfway house in March this year to the halfway house off Fremont Road. During that time, I had to look for a job from 8 o'clock in the morning until 6 p.m. every day. I've heard in prison guys say, it's going to be hard on you. It's going to be tough because they were repeat offenders. They came back. They said, you're not going to be able to find a job. The pressure's going to be on you. It's going to be so tough. Everything negative is going to be coming towards you because you're a convicted felon. That's the strike that you have against you. And I made up in my mind that I wouldn't have that strike hold me back. Every morning I would go out looking for a job in that halfway house just to find, sir, we're not hiring because I'm a convicted felon. I started to see that it was coming true, what they were saying, but I couldn't give up on that. I had to keep seeking, just keep seeking. It. Every day I searched, searched different places. I would pick one street, one highway, and just target every building on that street filling out applications day in and day out. Still, sorry, sir, we're not hiring. You have a record, convicted felon. If only they knew how hard I wanted to get that chance to prove myself, Yes, sir. they would see they could have hired me and I would have shown them that. But at that time, I couldn't get a job. I thought everything I was doing in prison for was better myself, for taking the courses was helping me to be a better person but I was lacking some skills in communication, presenting myself in an interview. And I thought by taking those classes in prison, it would help me, which it didn't. I was referred to Goodwill by my counselor in the halfway house. She said, have you heard of Goodwill? And I said, yes, typically like the answer I gave her was through clothing, really. Correct. And she said, well, maybe you need to check out Goodwill and see what they have to offer. So I went by Goodwill on Freedom Drive, 
and I was introduced to Tina Benitez in a job connection. And she said, might I help you? I said, yes, ma'am. I'm here to try to find a job, get on a computer, get my resume, just get something going because I don't have a job and I need it bad. And she said, I have something going on right now, a class called Construction Skills Training Class. Have you heard of it? I said, no, ma'am, I haven't. And she ran down a list of what it had to offer. Blueprint reading, construction mathematics, technology, green living, habitats, and construction building. And also had a part with resumes, mm -hmm. job readiness. And when I heard readiness and job resumes, I said, this is what I need. And I sure I like to sign up for it. And once she signed me up for the class, that, I believe, opened my life right there because I had people really trying to push me to do the right thing there. Anastasia Knight and Butch Bacchus. Their hard work and making sure I got the skills I needed while taking that class paid off, really, because in the process of going through the construction skills training class, hands-on training at Goodwill, I was in the readiness program and a resume program. And the stage night helped me with my resume. Even though I had a 17-year gap, my resume was awesome. She made sure that everything I've done before I went to prison was right, all the classes I've taken. So it did help because I had to fill in the gaps with my resume. Question, how important was it for you to having a resume going out there looking for a job? Important. Oh, it's very important because your resume speaks before you speak. It's like it's telling who you are before you get to give a chance to say who you are. And during that resume process, it gives the employer a chance to get to know your skills and qualifications and things you've been doing with your time that's positive. So I recommend a resume is very great. You need to have a resume. How the process as far as going through the class and how long was the classes and what did you exactly, I mean, how much did it take you to another level? To be honest, Mr. Brown, the class was 10 weeks long from 8 o'clock in the morning until 6. Sometimes, well, I say 6 because that's when I had to be back at the halfway house, but it ended at 4.30, but those extra hour and a half or two hours, I would sit and think preparing myself for the next day of class. It gave me a self of confidence, self-esteem. I felt great about myself because I was doing something where I can be certified in. And I knew right then I had the right people behind me helping me reach that level. So taking that class at Goodwill really gave me self-confidence because I really wanted it. I wanted to have something concrete that I can present to the employers. Well, I'm certified in this. I've been taking this. This is up to date. It gave me a sense of pride. It really did. Okay, we got a lot of individuals that's out there that's coming from that incarceration. How important was you to actually follow up and go into Goodwill instead of being discouraged? Because I know a lot of people probably was discouraging you, telling you, man, this ain't gonna work, man. We need to go ahead and do what we was doing in the past. How important was it you to keep that frame of mind of wanting to do the right thing? And you're correct about the influence correct. came back over mm -hmm. again for us, pulling me in that negative way. The thoughts came, the words came, but it wasn't strong enough to pull me in that direction. Because like I said, I failed in my first life doing those things. If it didn't work then, how will it work now? So I couldn't go. I had to try doing it the right way this time. I had to. Okay, you got, you got to completing the class, the course and all that 10 weeks. Of and I heard that was something important that happened during your graduation. What was it? I got my family back. The family that I lost, my family was right there in graduation with me. My daughter, the mother, my fiance now, it was all wonderful. I got my family back. And knowing I had my family back, that gave me a sense of pride and more confidence to want to do the right thing, to continue doing it. The way I see my family look at me now, I can't fail my family, and I can't fail myself. That was a wonderful thing that I got. Mm. I heard that you got the honor to be the guest speaker at your graduation ceremony. Um, tell us what you were talking about. I mean, because you had to give a lot of inspiration to that to your classmates. 
I guess by going through so much in a short period of time and what I've been through over the years, I, I was an inspiration to some because trials and tribulations came my way, but I've overcame that by doing the right thing and allowing companies like Goodwill to help me because you have to utilize companies that's out there to help you. And Goodwill was one of the companies that helped me. The organization had everything that I needed, the training, the people that's willing to go that extra mile, extra distance to help me, caring. Being a guest speaker, it was wonderful. It really was. It was a surprise to me that I was chosen, but it was a wonderful feeling that I was able to share my story, things that I've been through. I thank Goodwill really for getting me to this point, giving me the confidence to move forward, to do the right thing by helping me. I really do. When you, I mean, you're an inspiration to this community, um, Mr. Friday, because of the fact that there's a lot of people that's out there who's going through the same situation, coming out of prison, jails and stuff, and they want to give up and all that. But hearing your testimony as far as how you're doing, you're doing an outstanding job. And, you know, I know that I can only see but the best for you, but how important is it for you to have that positive thinking and to keep yourself circled around the right individual who wants to do right in life. I'll give you a story, Mr. Brown. Yes, sir. And this story is my story. While I was enrolled in the program at Goodwill, every morning from 8 o'clock until 4.30, I would take the construction skills training class while still looking for a job when I could on the weekends also. And in the process of going to that class, I kept saying, I can't give up. I gotta stay focused, I can't give up. Something's gonna give. Even though it was hard, it was challenging. I got discouraged, I'm human, but I had to keep going because I got a plan. I'm in the process of reinventing myself. So I stayed focused. And the key word is to stay focused and have it in your heart that desire to wanna to continue to do the right thing, the right thing. While in that construction skills training class, I found the job. It was washing dishes at the ranch house. I didn't care how much money they paid me at the time because I overcame the obstacle of landing the job, which I couldn't find before. And that's what really gave me confidence to continue moving forward. Because landing that job was an obstacle that I overcame. That gave me the fuel to want to continue to find another job. While continuing to take the construction skills training class, I went on three interviews at Mercy Hospital. I landed the job with a thank you note because that's what I was taught in goodwill. Once you go on the interview, leave the employer a thank you card or a thank you note. And when I left that interview, I went to Family Dollar, got a card, wrote a thank you letter, a little note, and hand delivered it to Mercy Hospital. And Maya Hector held it up and said, this is how you do it. I think a week later, I got a phone call, said, go take the drug test, you've been hired. And right then and there, I knew there was nothing that I couldn't do because I stayed focused and I kept believing in myself. And that's what I encourage a lot of people to do because second chance is about giving yourself a chance. Yes, sir. And I gave myself a chance. Instead of falling to the ways of the streets that were pulling, I gave myself a second chance. I had to stay focused. I could not fail. I failed before in the past. I know you stated about the taking the drug test. How important was it to know that you, that feeling that you wasn't using? Oh, it was awesome because I knew by taking that drug test, the job was mine because I didn't do drugs. I don't do drugs. And companies today, they look at that. So if you're trying to work for any company, you will have to take a drug test. So if you like to smoke marijuana or whatever, it's going to be harder for you to try to take that drug test and pass if you're looking for a job. So I advise you just to really let it go because if you're trying to really change your life and find a job, you need to stay focused and doing the right thing, really. Okay, Mr. Friday, we got to take a break. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be right back on Second Chance. Thank you.
Every success story begins with a donation. By giving to Goodwill, you are reaching out to change someone's life. Last year, 897,000 donations provided clothing and household items to fill our stores. At the same time, we helped create a greener community by diverting 55 million pounds of goods from area landfills. Our customers help us help others. Whether looking for a great value or hunting for a hidden treasure, more than 2.1 million shoppers visited our 20 stores last year. But it's more than just great value. 90 cents of every dollar spent at our stores supports Goodwill's job training and employment programs. Goodwill provides assistance for everyone. The road to employment starts at Goodwill every day through our job resource centers and skills training programs. Thanks to our generous donors and retail customers, we were able to provide these services for nearly 18,000 people last year. Each of our services is designed to give participants the resources, skills, and confidence they need to find and keep a job. Let's go to work. Goodwill's mission, changing lives through the power of work, comes to life when someone finds a job with our help. Last year, more than 2,800 people gained employment through Goodwill's assistance. Thanks to Goodwill's work, people are building their futures, families are strengthened, and our communities are being enriched. You donate, you purchase, back to we assist. Together, we change lives. This is Goodwill. Welcome back to Second Chance, ladies and gentlemen. My guest, Paris Friday. And um, I guess it's really touching because back that to see this young man actually coming back and making it in life, you know, it's very important that we understand that it's not easy out here. It's not. It's not easy, but you gotta wanna do whatever you're trying to do. You gotta stay focused. <clears throat> it's tough, it is. And I'll be lying to say that it's not. But it's a part of you that gets to keep moving forward, even when you don't want to move forward, because it's the right thing to do for yourself and for the loved ones that's depending on you to do the right thing. I advise everyone that's going through anything in their life, don't give up, because just when you're about to give up, that, sh that sun is shining right there around that corner. You can't give up. You can't give up. Giving up is not an option. The more challenging things come your way, the bigger your blessing is going to be. That's what I believe. I really believe that the more challenging things come your way, the bigger your blessing is going to be. And God has shown me through that. He's taken me and reconstructed my whole life. Like Job in the Bible, I've lost everything and gained everything tenfold now. And it's thanks to God and that desire believing in myself and committed. You have to be committed, Mr. Brown, you really do. How does your family feel about the changes in your life? Wow, they tell me every day. My fiance, Angel, she just tells me how I'm an amazing man and a f great father. And my daughter, she just beams with pride. It does something to me when I look into her eyes, my daughter, Jermaine, when I know that she's proud of me. Because that's all I wanted was my family to be proud of me. The family that I lost, now I've gained. And they're so proud of me. And that's what keeps me going, give me that fire, that will, to continue making them proud. Because I would be less of a man to really do something, to let them down, to fall weak. When I say fall weak, it's to give in to the negative ways. You can't give in. God is so good, and everything is so great when you're doing right. When you're doing right, everything good is falling to your path. I'm a witness to that. I'm living proof of that. And my family is the most important thing to me right now, and I love them so much. I have my family back. Where do you see yourself at one year from now? Wow. I'd like to see my daughter off to college, just to be there helping her on campus. Married to Angel, my fiance. And 
probably doing something in construction, dealing with the certification that I've acquired. Mm -hmm. But life is good right now, and it's going to get better. So in one year from now, I see myself doing even better because that's what I'm choosing to do. Okay, I know you talk about your fiance. How important to have her in your life? Because she's been there for a long period of time. It wasn't easy for her or for me because in the beginning, when I got sentenced to 20 years, I pushed her away because I was young at the time. And facing 20 years while she was pregnant with our daughter, I couldn't deal with it because I was in a young state of mind. I thought I was a man out there toting guns and selling drugs, doing this, but no, that doesn't make you a man. And then when the responsibility came on to me when she was pregnant and I was incarcerated in the county jail, it hit me. I was like, wow, this is overwhelming. Here I am. I've left her out there alone, very irresponsible. Now I'm going off to prison for 20 years, very irresponsible. Over the years, she tried to contact me. I pushed her away over the years in the beginning of my bid because of hurt, shame, and I guess I was dealing with something that I didn't want to face, but I had to face because I let her down. And she's been a strong woman over the years, kept trying to come back into my life here. Your daughter wants to get to know her father. I'd be right here, just allow me to be right here. And I couldn't do it at the time because I was still going through that process of getting myself together. I didn't know really what I wanted out of life and how I wanted to go about getting it. But I wish I had to let her just be there. Then I wouldn't have wasted these years of not seeing my daughter over the years of being incarcerated. That's why right now I don't take no day for granted. Family time, I cherish it. When I first saw my daughter in 2005, when Angel brought her to my, brought her to me while I was in prison, mm -hmm. it was so wonderful. The, the feeling was so beautiful. Looking into my daughter's eyes and looking at her and touching her face, arm, just seeing me and seeing the love that she had in her eyes. She didn't know me because I wasn't there. But she knew me through Angel's love. Angel sure. always expressed to her, your father was a good man despite what he's done. And she never said not one thing about me. I always talked positive to our daughter about me. Mm -hmm. And so when my daughter came to visit me, she had so much love she gave to me. And that was wonderful. It really was. And that allowed me to feel the love that I've been missing over the years. Mm. Okay, as far as the youth that's in this community that's going through all these situation, what kind of advice would you give to them? I know it's tough out there being young because so many negative influences come your way, peer pressure, and everyone wants to do what everyone else is doing to feel in, but quote, cool like, but cool is really doing what you need to do on your own alone as far as the right thing. Hang with positive people, someone that's going to help you reach that level of goal that you're trying to reach in life. Because if you hang with negative people, then that's what's going to happen to you. You're going to produce negative effects. So being around positive people, that's a good advice that I can give to you. And seek out help through older people that's doing positive things because they'll be willing to help you. This generation is not dead. It's not dead yet. It's not gone. We still have people that care and organizations that's willing to help. But you got to be willing to want it. And there's people out there that will be willing to help the youth. I'm one of them. I'm going to continue to help the youth. I would do that. Okay, if you had some words as far as Goodwill Industries program, what would you say about it? Wow, because that's a big statement. Goodwill programs are great. They, they are wonderful. Anything that you need help in as far as getting your GED, high school diploma, you can get that there. They will help you. If you feel that, well, I can't take this class because I don't have my high school diploma, well, Goodwill have a class they can offer to help you to do that. They can help you get your GED, then start taking classes that you might want to go into as a field of construction, banking, or nursing. They have those classes there to help you and will be willing to see you through everything. So I advise anyone that's 
trying to get direction in their life and set a path for them that's positive, they have to seek out goodwill. It's Friday, I'd like to thank you for being on the show, you know, and I'm talking to the community about not only goodwill, but yourself. You know, um, it's very important that in our society we hear the testimony from people who actually making it, you know, and through the everyday cycle that we're going through, just dealing with it, you know, and how important, it, how, how good does it feel for you to be a father? That father feeling, because we got a lot of people. Well, see, this it's a serious topic when you speak of how does it feel to be a father. It's a lot of children, boys and girls out there that need that father figure because a woman can't do it alone. Even though the male might be separated from the female due to differences, still be a part of that child's life. Don't take it personal to the point where just because you and the mother are not on good terms, make sure you're always there in that child's life by being the father, being the man that you're supposed to be because that child needs that help, that guidance from you. And by not being in that child's life, it's not only hurting that child, it's hurting the mother and you also, but at the time you're not knowing it, but it's destroying the family. And family is most important. That's what get everybody through everything today is being family, supportive. Children need guidance and help. You need a mother and father. Mr. Friday, um, I really appreciate you coming on the show. And anytime you want to come back and encourage the community, um, you're more than welcome to come back. Thank Audience, you, Mr. this show is for you. You know, um, thank you, Mr. Brown. I just want to thank Mr. Friday for coming on the show. Join my website www.secondchanceorganization.com and come on every Thursday at 5:30. I also want to thank you to God for making all this possible and for bringing Goodwill Industries and Individuals like Mr. Fry to come on and let us know that there is hope. You know, until um, we meet again, y'all have a great evening. And um, thank you for watching the show.